We've just wrapped up module two. The objectives for module two are distinctly different from that of module three. So just to recap, in module two, we were talking more about terms and facts, and we were providing a solid foundation in what to expect when you were editing and manipulating images. But as someone who already completed these uh, chapters or these lecture topics, you know that there's not a whole lot of actual Photoshop editing in these chapters. We learn about color management and creating basic files, changing color modes, and things like that. We also were introduced to Adobe Bridge, which again, if you're a photography student or you think you're a photographer or you want to be a photographer, whenever I say Adobe Bridge, you can substitute uh, Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom for that. And then we talked about Camera Raw for some basic editing. Photographers will use Camera Raw all of the time. Um, graphic artists should get into the habit of using Camera Raw because it's a quick way to do some basic uh, manipulations, even some advanced manipulations. We didn't cover all of what the textbook covers for chapter four, but if you're interested in learning more about it, you can go read like the 60 pages that we skipped. Um, if you if you were paying attention, you didn't have to read all 80 pages or however many pages are in that chapter. We just did a, a small introduction to what camera roll is. And then we talked about workspaces and panels. And what I said in that lecture was, yes, there are workspaces, there are, are panels, and there are presets. And here's a kind of a really basic overview of that. But the more you use a software application, whether it's Photoshop or InDesign, Illustrator, or even Microsoft Word, you're going to become more and more familiar with the workspace and where the panels are at and things like that. And so we really kind of just covered it in a really basic way. Starting with module three, layer selections and using color, we are going to start diving headfirst into Photoshop and we're going to be using it to do all of our manipulations. And so don't forget about the good practices that we learned in module two because each module compounds on the previous module. Um, but also keep in mind that now instead of learning about theory and learning about facts and terms and things like that, we are going to do hands-on activities. And so the, the biggest difference for you as a student um, between module two and module three is in module two you may have been able to do all the reading and answer all the questions correctly on the knowledge test and then you didn't have to do a lot of the skills-based activities inside the chapter. Or better yet, if you didn't do them, um, it really wasn't going to hinder you too much when it was time to wrap up the module doing your project and your exam. However, with module three, um, there are lots and lots and lots of hands-on activities that are covered in the textbook, in my lecture, and in my, or our, let's say our because I'm not the only one who makes these videos, in our demo videos. You need to find the method that works best for you for your learning. And if you work best by reading the textbook and doing all the activities in the textbook, then that's the method that you should use to get the content that you need to be successful in Art 1280. However, if you don't like to do that or you're a slow reader, I personally am a slow reader, um, you may think that it's a better option to listen to my lectures and to watch along with the demo activities which are found in the skills practice activities. Um, if that's what you like, then I would recommend doing that. And then I would still go back and skim through the chapter uh, because as you skim through, you should be able to skim over a lot of the content because it was already covered in the lecture or in the demos. And you should use the reading just to supplement your learning. Okay, now let's talk about module three and what to expect. So we're gonna cover the foundation of uh, raster-based images, talk about pixel basics. A lot of this will be review from what I covered in the creating files lecture. We'll talk about the basics of using layers and some ways to manipulate images while using layers. The first big chapter that we're going to cover that really kind of dives into, into using Photoshop as being the primary source of what you're going to do for that lecture topic is the selections and masks lecture and uh, depends on what semester you take this class but we usually spend at least one week if not more talking about various selections and masks because everything that you do in Photoshop you're going to be able to do that feature or apply that skill in conjunction with a selection or a mask and so if you don't really grasp those concepts now every single chapter after Chapter 9 will be difficult for you because we'll be talking about how to change the color in an image which requires you to make a selection but we're not going to talk about the steps to make the selection anymore. We're going to say well that was already covered because we spent an entire week or, or more depending on the semester. 
The history panel is a, a quick, short um, lecture, and you can do that probably in an hour from start to finish. And then using color is really important because we're going to expand upon what we learned in chapter one with color management. And we'll talk about the idea of color modes in more detail than we did for module two. The last thing that I want to emphasize before I wrap up this really long intro video is that at the end of every module there are between one and three projects and there is an exam. And I would recommend completing all of the projects before you take the exam. So do all of the knowledge tests which test the facts and kind of figures of what we're learning. And I would do the projects because they test the skills that you're learning in the, in the textbook or in the videos, etc. And then the module exam combines all of those things together to test whether you're grasping those concepts. And so you should do all of the knowledge tests and all the projects first. I'd also recommend that before you even start module three, you should launch project two and project three, and you should take a look at the requirements. And yes, I'm showing you the project on screen, but these projects change from semester to semester and teacher to teacher, so don't read what's on the screen. Just acknowledge that this is project two for the semester that I'm recording it in. Um, you should take a look at the requirements and you should make note of the things that you already know how to do. For example, number two here says to set your color space to North America Pre-Press 2. We already did that for module two, so you should know how to do that. But if you come down to the bottom, you might not know how to crop images to an exact size with height and resolution. And so you should make a note that you need to pay careful attention when that's either covered in the textbook or it's covered in my videos, whichever method you decide to follow to, to get the content that you need for this class. I wouldn't do the projects. Oh, I lost my place here. I wouldn't do the projects um, right away because you don't have all the things that you need to be able to complete them. But if you have an idea of what you need to know, as you're reading chapter seven, or as you're watching the lecture for chapter seven, you can highlight those things and you can pause the video or you can take extra notes on those subjects so that when it comes time to do project two and project three, you'll be able to complete them. Okay, that's all I have for the introduction to module three. Um, as always, if you have any questions, you can always email me at the email address listed on the course syllabus or through Canvas. And if I, Jessica, am not your teacher, um, always make sure that you're emailing your teacher before you email me. I'm happy to answer your questions, but um, it's kind of a hierarchy thing. You should always ask your teacher first and not kind of go over their head. Okay, that wraps up the introduction to module three.